We don't think of ourselves as the Saudi Arabia of uranium, the way Alberta thinks of itself as the Saudi Arabia of heavy oil. But we are. $600 million of sales last year. You know, this is not small potatoes. And of course the business elite is chomping at the bit in their private meetings because they think they can create an, another Alberta here only on the nuclear fuel cycle. Once we release these materials into the biosphere, they cannot be taken back. It's like Pandora's box. We made a major step forward last week with the announcement of the Uranium Development Partnership, which will make recommendations on where Saskatchewan can add value to the uranium. And we are going to have an open and public debate about one of the most important industries in our province. I think we'll be seeking advice from the minister and others on how we best engage Saskatchewan people on this issue. We're just in town covering uh, the meeting that's happening tonight. I'm wondering if you're going to us? The what? What meeting is that? Uh, it's the Uranium Development Partnership. It's the Uranium Development Partnership. They, uh, they made a report recommending that they expand uranium mining in the north, maybe put a uranium refinery and have a nuclear power plant maybe near North Battleford. Uranium and nuclear development? Yeah, there's a meeting today to ask the people what they think. So. The government appoints a 12-member panel with a narrow mandate that excludes renewable resources, is packed with nuclear and mining execs and known pro-nuclear advocates, allows no public submissions, and is disbanded the day of its report's release. This was the UDP, funded to the tune of over two million taxpayer dollars, and full of recommendations made by people who stand to make hundreds of millions from their own personal shopping list. This is the largest consultation exercise on the issue of uranium value-added opportunities the province has ever undertaken. So we've got one group here saying the world's going to end with the, with the hell studies, and the other side saying it's perfectly safe. And it's up to us to find out what acceptable risk is. I feel with our children there is no acceptable risk. They're, I came here to get some enlightenment and I wanted to see what kind of publication as a taxpayer I've produced here. And I've got more questions as I walk out of this meeting than clarity. The only piece in this report that talks about renewables is that it's possible but expensive and has some challenges. My guess is that if Bruce, Bruce Power owned the wind that we'd soon we'd have a lot of wind generators around. And they're playing puppet with us. People are very passionate about their way of life in this province. And we're also sick and tired of corporations controlling this country. We are living on the front end, the nuclear fuel system with multinationals basically controlling government policy. So, so we have a history here and we've got in general a fairly broad support for the nuclear industry. So the question really driving then the work of the UDP is you have a renaissance, you have an existing capacity, where might you go from there? I'd like to say on behalf of our members and our chambers across the province, <coughs> we support the recommendations. More power. What are your thoughts on how this process is, has gone? Well, it's been a really interesting process and Dan Perrins has uh, managed this so that uh, people who come get to be listened to. What was the purpose of having the consultation processes when the people weren't listened to? Or is the government of Saskatchewan just going to move right ahead and do what they darn well please? So you're doing a documentary? Yeah. Who are you doing it for? We're independent. Independent. Yeah. Please move to the back of the room or I will have to ask you to leave the room. And why? Because this is, we're media. Because it's... No, you're not. Why isn't the oil industry honest with us and tell us the real reason that they're in partnership in the back rooms with uranium because they want it for northern oil sands development 20 years from now? On the one hand, I want to be brief, but on the other hand, there's so much at stake that it, it, it bothers me that I have to be brief. There's no prior informed consent in any of these policies. 